tell my story. At his first trial, he testified. I think the only time he didn't talk is when he was playing the role of the mute woman uh, down in Galveston, Texas, before he uh, shot and killed and then dismembered his neighbor and then went to trial and was found not guilty. Unbelievable. Let's put it back in the think tank. All right, he loves to talk, and my understanding, Holly, and you're down in Texas, it was your people down in Galveston who said this guy is not guilty of anything. Um, <laughs> he's going to testify again. He's going to testify you know again. Why? What is that going to be you know like? Why? You know why he's going to testify? Because it works. It's not that, that he was truly acquitted of a crime because he was truly not guilty. It's that's how good Dick DeGaron is as a Texas trial lawyer. I mean, Dick DeGaron could probably convince me that I killed that guy. He's that good. So, and, and Galveston, right outside Houston, where uh, Mr. DeGaron, you know, lives and works and is a legend, um, he is that good. But I'm sorry, third, this is going to be a hard, hard case for, for Mr. DeGaron. I mean, honestly. This guy uh, just keeps walking into rooms and finding dead bodies that happen to be close uh, family <laughs> friends of his. So, um, you know, yes, the Galveston trial was an anomaly, but now we have a pattern and it's going to be a big, big problem for him. But he keeps on talking because it keeps working. In fact, I think that Mr. Durst is just dying to be caught somehow. I mean, who sends in block letters, besides a serial killer, who sends in block letters an anonymous note to the police with the victim's address and the word cadaver written on it. He's messing with everybody. He's messing with all of us. And so uh, Dick DeGaron has um, a tough hill in front of him. And although I think that he's a wonderful trial lawyer, I'm clearly a fangirl. Um, this is a, these facts are ridiculous. However, I will say one thing that's a very powerful rhetorical device that's being used here is that Dick DeGaron has convinced his client to authorize him to admit that his client wrote that letter to the police. And that's a really big deal because this powerful rhetorical device that's being used by Mr. Durst's attorney is to say to certain incriminating facts to say, yes, and so what? And so will, I will be fascinated. I will have my popcorn ready for this trial when it happens because I'm dying to know how he handles that fact. I think that's the linchpin of the case. I don't see how the jury can can accept that fact that Mr. Durst wrote that letter about his friend and called her a cadaver and sent it to the police. I don't know how you get over that, but I'll be You're going to really, need a lot of popcorn uh, though. This is it. like a this is like fun. a 3 month trial. I mean, you, yeah. you have like a, a barrel full of popcorn. Uh Bernarda, um he's going to testify. Uh he's not going to um walk up on the stand. It looks like he's in a wheelchair at, at this point, at least for the purposes of being in court. Um, how's that cross-examination going to go? So, Vinny, the, actually, I think it's actually intentional. I don't think he's as weak as he portrays himself to be. I think that it's an act so the jury can feel sympathy for him and also try to put out the narrative that because he's old and frail that he wouldn't have been capable of being able to exercise such strength in order to kill Susan Berman. So what he's trying to seek is sympathy from the jury for an acquittal. But what the prosecution has to do and what I would do is actually show photos of him at the age of when this homicide took place so they can see the type of man and the strength that this man had at the time of the murder. Joseph Lowe, can anyone be found guilty of two different murders at trial? Well, absolutely. Uh, I think uh, what you really want to know is can they be found of two murders even though they're only charged with one? And this is the cleverness that the district attorney who's trying this case is doing, which is different than Dick DeGaron's first offense. You see, in this one, what the prosecutor figured out how to do is to use the first alleged murder that is, goes unsolved as backdoor character evidence into why he killed her in this case, and he's using it for motive, which he doesn't even need. It's not a requirement, but it's very clever. And think of the effect it has on the listener. Everybody here right now can all agree that when you think of him supposedly killing his wife, and then killing this guy in Texas and chopping the body up and getting rid of it and saying, I did it because I was afraid, you know, of what I've accused of before. And then now we've got this murder of Berman, who supposedly 
he killed on the day she was supposed to meet with prosecutors to tell them all the evidence she had about how he did kill his wife. So this is significantly more complicated than Dick DeGuerin may have had before. Keep in mind also that Mr. Lewin is prosecutor. He's uh, won over 12 of these cold murder cases. So the man knows a little bit about how to get it done. So I don't see how they're going to get out of this one because the devil's going to have to be in the details and we don't have enough of it. But I definitely know one thing. In my ranch in Wyoming, when a grizzly bear gets to killing uh, humans and they get a taste of that blood, there's only one thing they can do. Put them down. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen here. All right, we've got a trial day for this one. We're continuing to track it here. It's on the docket. There you go. April 12th, 2021, California.